You know, I'm terrible at introductions, so I'm just going to skip. <laughs> I'm just going to skip them this time. I don't feel like it. It is a cold, chilly, rainy day here <clears throat> at Fort Darling, and I am not in the mood. Um, this coffee is unfortunately not flavored with anything from Scotland, so... Depressing. Anyway, uh, I was I was working with a client, a client, nameless blob, <laughs> and uh, I uh, you know we we had, we had talked about no lock hints and how like the 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 hint, the hint no lock is quite misleading because what it leads people to believe is that their query will not take any locks out, uh, but when really it should be called with no respect because it just what it means is that it doesn't respect the locks taken by other queries and you know how you can end up seeing other modification transactions like in flight you might see you know an update doing an insert and a delete you might see a partial insert you might see a partial delete you could see all sorts of weird <coughs> weird things in there that can give you incorrect results so uh we talked about that and you know um Right, you know, my use of advice is if you if you don't if you can avoid those no lock hints, by golly, don't 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 use them because you can end up with some real crap. It's like your application relies on supplying important information to people. You should probably give them accurate information. Just thinking out loud. But there's something kind of funny about <coughs> locking hints and uh, and query speed and I don't mean this from the perspective that uh, you know queries that are with no lock that don't respect locks taken by other queries are faster because they don't get blocked because we can run a query with a, a tab lock hint and we can have uh, that query that will lock the entire table <laughs> boom uh, also be much faster so it's not the locking here well I mean it's not the not the blocking here but it is kind of the locking see when you run a query with uh, with a lock hint like no lock or tab lock or tab lock X here um, neither one's fine it doesn't matter which one you use there uh, SQL Server the storage engine not the optimizer the storage engine can make a choice to uh, use IAM pages uh, to to scan the index, which track like large, like four gig chunks of pages, and read things in basically physical order, so you can you can kind of get through that a little bit quicker than you know if you scan uh, the table using a traditional like like scan of the B tree, uh, like you're reading through all those pages. So here are some examples, and uh, what I want to point out is that a lot of a lot of the overhead or a lot of the, the speed decrease that I see when the locking hint is removed and the scan uh, the scan gets slower is in tables that have a lot of large objects in them. So a lot of like, in, like you know, uh, long strings, max data types, stuff like that. So here, here's an example with the post table. And if, if I did things right, I should have the query plans up here and ready to go. And what you may notice is that for the query that has no locking hint, uh, the scan of the post table takes about 18.2 seconds. For the two queries that do have locking hints, one with the no lock hint and one with the tab lock hint, these both take about 12 seconds. And this is this is repeatable. I just don't feel like repeating it and making you watch 18 plus 12 plus 12 run <laughs> again. So in the post table in the Stack Overflow database, um, if we go look at what we've got for columns in there, we've got a number of columns that are on the large side. We've got body right here, uh, going down a little bit. We've got, uh, well, that's not too big right there. It's, you know, it's okay. And then we've got tags and title down here, which are also kind of stringy. But really, the, the chief instigator for that slowness is the, uh, the body column, I, I believe, here. Now, the reason why I say that ties in a bit too uh, there being larger objects in the table, like you know, big strings and stuff, is because we can reproduce sort of a similar effect on the comments table. Now, in the comments table, we only have one column that is of any um, bulk, and that is this column called text, which is an Envarcar 700. All right, and if we look at the query plans for these, we can see that, well, this was a lot, <laughs> this was a lot faster, but 
This one took about four seconds, and this one took about three seconds, and this last one, ah, go away tooltip, which also uh, used the a locking hand, also took about three seconds. So we saved about a second on this one. So less large object data, still a noticeable difference, but not crazy, right? So the more la large objects you have sitting on that table, kind of the worse things get. Let's contrast that with the votes table. Now, the votes table has nothing blobby or lobby or anything in it. It's nothing at all. If we look at this, it's got a bunch of nice, narrow little data times in them. But some like five ints and a date. Who cares, right? And that, that shows when we when we look at the, the query timings because there's just like you know, like I, I, I had a web page <laughs> opens milliseconds worth of difference between the scans with uh, locking hints and no locking hints and, and, and whatever. So like, there's just not like a big difference here. Where I'm like, oh, we, we gotta call the police. We save uh, several hundred and we save like 200 milliseconds on something. That's not, that's not my gig. My gig is not saving just a couple hundred. Unless you want to save a, a couple hundred milliseconds, I can totally do that too, but I prefer bigger, more interesting performance changes. And we save 47 milliseconds. Hooray. All right. It's kind of boring. It's not really anything that you want to like write to a client. Like I was able to tune this query to be 47 milliseconds faster. Yay. La -di -da. So what can you do about this? Um, you, you are uh, a smart, intelligent, good-looking developer, and you want to avoid getting incorrect results in your queries. But you also want <coughs> your queries to run quickly. You want to get rid of those no-lock hints. You probably don't want to add tab-lock hints to your read queries because you can you, you probably stand a chance of reducing concurrency quite a bit there. I wouldn't recommend adding those in to replace no lock hints. That's not that's not going to save your bacon. Um, if you want to learn more about queries uh, that use locking hints and IM scans, uh, of course, Mr. Paul White has a great post. Paul uh, from 2015 uh, over on sequelperformance.com uh, and it is all about allocation order scans. You should go read that if you want more um, a little bit more fine detail than I can squeeze into a short video here. But if you want to fix that, if you want to avoid <coughs> uh, the, the scenario, you kind of you're kind of in a weird place because if you if your OLTP workload is is scanning clustered indexes, I think you've done you've done a poor job indexing uh, for your OLTP workload. You should probably revisit that. Maybe maybe give Blitz Index a run. Maybe check your queries for missing index requests. Maybe just look to see if your queries uh, like you know where clause and join clauses line up with the indexes that you have there. You you generally don't want to be scanning clustered indexes in your OLTP workload. But where I see this being more common is when you have a reporting element over your OLTP workload. In that case, you may want to look at creating some non-clustered indexes to support your reporting queries that don't have a bunch of that lob data in that the clustered indexes might. Yes, this can result in you creating some rather wide, unwieldy, unhappy indexes, but if we're talking about the difference of, you know, six or seven seconds on a query, it might be worth it. Uh, if you're on SQL Server 2014 and up, and please be on 14 and up, that is six years old now. Uh, Non-clustered column store indexes can be really helpful for that. You get, you can, you can make a, a, a wider index that, you know, uh, is compressed and all that good stuff. And generally reporting queries need to do things that column store indexes excel at. So that might be a choice for you. Some good ideas in general that won't fix the slower scans would be using an optimistic isolation level like read committed snapshot isolation or snapshot isolation. That will that will can help you alleviate the blocking that you probably added those no lock hints in there to uh, alleviate, but it will not make a, a, an, a scan or will not make a, a, a B tree scan faster than an IAM scan for those tables with big lobs. So those are your choices. Those are my opinions, and I had some query plans to back them up. So there's that. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in some other video, some other time, hopefully with something more Scottish in my mug. Goodbye.